Hi, this is the advisor with Stacey Chalemi, the founder of the Complete Herbal Guide. And today I'm very excited because Natalie's here again with me. Natalie Boehm is the founder of Epilepsy, Defeating Epilepsy Organization. And today we're going to talk about a topic that we feel is very important to discuss. It's about depression and epilepsy, a new way uh, of handling it and a new perspective on it. And so epilepsy is something that is very hard to deal with. And even myself, you know, um, when things were going really well, I would find that I was on top of the world that my seizures are doing good. And sometimes, you know, for, if I didn't have seizures for a while, this might sound silly, but even though I, I knew I had epilepsy, I kind of forgot because life was, was going so well. And then all of a sudden my seizures would come back. And then all of a sudden I'd get very sad. I get very depressed. And it's like a reminder that it's not going away. And, you know, I, I feel like, you know, a lot of people, you know, battle with depression who have epilepsy. But the, the thing is, is how do you cope with depression? How do you, how do you get out of the depression? So it doesn't take control over your life because once depression gets control of you, you know, you just, you go downhill from there. And then, you know, some people have even committed suicide because they were in depression about it. They didn't know how to handle it and they gave up on life. And that's something we don't want to see. We want to try to help the community, Natalie and I, avoid being in depression. And if you feel yourself being, getting depressed, we want to teach you different ways and a different way of handling it, a different perspective of dealing with it so you can get yourself out of depression and you could live a healthy, happy, and productive life and not let epilepsy get the best of you. So why don't you tell people about what you feel um, depression, how, how, how it's taken a toll on your life, you know, cause you've had it a long time, just like me. Oh yeah. I started having symptoms of depression when I was 12 and probably some of the darkest times I had battling depression was in my teenage years, mostly because at that time my seizures weren't controlled and I saw my friends doing things such as getting their first car, being able to travel on school trips, things like that. And it just wasn't part of my life. And I just couldn't understand why I couldn't get these things under control. And where I feel sorry for my, my parents when it came to this is my neurologist at the time never recommended seeing a psychologist or psychiatrist. There was no mention of medication or was there something I could do to have coping skills. And I did in my teenage years attempt suicide twice. And I'm so glad, obviously, that, you know, it didn't work and then I'm here. But I, you know, I understand and empathize with people who are battling depression now, because if you don't take care of it right at the beginning, it, you really can go downhill and downhill quickly if oh, yeah. it's something really bad. And I have found that, you know, I take a low dose of Soloft to help with my depression and it's help. But medicine has just been one piece of the puzzle. Probably the thing that has really saved my life and saved me from having um being down that dark path again has been exercise such as um lifting weights and yoga eating well. And one thing that um, a therapist I had in the past taught me, which has been um, still a, a very key play, playing part of my um, treatment, I have what's called um, a survivor list. And so let's say I'm having um, bad depression. I have first that I'll do something I like, such as going in my garden or going out to exercise for 20 minutes. If that doesn't work, call a friend. If that doesn't work, do something like be with my husband, something that brings me comfort. And only then if I get down the whole list and nothing is going on, that's when I'm to seek help. And they recently out this year, put the number 988 out instead of the long, you know, suicide hotline that they had for the national suicide office. And I think this 988 is the best thing that, you know, we could have done because there are so many people who truly need help, but they're so afraid to say, I need help because of the stigma. We're yeah. already dealing with the stigma, having epilepsy. Now we're adding another stigma of anxiety, depression, mental illness. And as humans battling neurological disorder, we can only take so much. And that's really why I feel so many people are afraid to take their first step to uh, 
to acknowledge something's not right. And I can just say from my own experience and to anyone here in this community, you shouldn't feel shame for asking for help. Yeah. It's okay not to be okay. And yes. the reason for that is we're human and yeah. we can't, you know, we can only take on so much. And when things aren't going right, it's okay to say, take a step back and say, you know, I need help. Something's not, something just isn't right, but I need to make it better for myself. You know, I, I can, I hear that 100% and I agree with you. You know, I, I had struggled. My, my seizures were like a roller coaster. And especially when I got to um, the age where I could drive, I was driving for a little while. And then my seizures came back and my doctor said, please stop driving. We need to get your seizures under control until you could drive again. So I didn't drive for over 15 years until oh, wow. they were able to control my seizures and find the right cocktail of medications. And I also use holistic living and eating properly, getting enough of sleep, changing my whole lifestyle and the combo of the both helped me control my seizures. But while I wasn't driving, you know, something so simple like driving, made me feel so depressed. I felt like I was in prison in my own home and I could feel a depression. Oh yeah. And I, I, you know, after a while, sometimes you just like, I can't drive. I can't do this. Some people I've talked to, they're like, you know, I, I can't drive. I, I can't, I can't hold a job. And what is there to live for? And that's a mentality that you hear a lot, you know, and, you oh, know, yeah. you, you know, for me, I think what saved me was, helped me get out of depression was pos the power of positive thinking. I stopped focusing on the negative and I started to look at the positive things because there was a point where I was getting very depressed and I felt like I had sunk into my own grave and I didn't know how to get out of it. And the first thing I had to do was I, you know, before I, I started to resort to the power of positive thinking, what I did was, is I started to talk to people and I started to talk to professionals and just getting the emotions out, just talking about how I felt, you know, getting all those repressed emotions out made me feel so much better because sometimes when we're dealing with epilepsy and we're suffering from, you know, other other diseases and disorders like depression or anxiety or anger, you know, from the epilepsy, you know, we tend to um, feel so overwhelmed and we're so embarrassed to tell people, you know, one, you don't want people to think of you differently. Two, you feel like it's a weakness, you know, like if I oh, talk absolutely. to somebody, you know, I, I, you know, that I'm weak, that I can't deal with this on my own, because that's the generation we came from. And the generation before us, our parents were taught to not talk, you know, and they taught us not to talk. You need to be strong, but we're humans, like you said, and talking to somebody, getting your repressed emotions out and then figuring out tools and strategies to deal with those emotions you're feeling helps a lot you know I feel like oh it does you know it you know when I started to talk about my emotions it was like I started crying and bawling because I didn't even know it for the long time how I was feeling big I became so numb as a person because I had so many emotions repressed inside and I was always taught not to share them and I and once I was able to like relate and 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 be able to feel what I was feeling it was like, like a, like a bird just flew out of me and took all those, those repressed emotions and all that negativity out of me. And I started to focus not on the negative things anymore, not on the epilepsy, but focus on, on the good things in life and have gratitude. I have a family, I have this, I have that. And to just focus on the positiveness. And even though I, I couldn't drive, well, what can I do? You know, I was very yeah. good at communicating and I was very good at writing. So I used my strengths and my, and I was able to make myself a lifestyle that was beneficial for me. And I feel people need to really focus, you know, try first go try to talk to somebody. And if somebody's not understanding them, look for somebody that can look and give you an unbiased, you know, um, way of looking at things and that can relate to you. I agree. Absolutely. It's really, really important. And one thing I really like, um, as I've been, you know, running my foundation, doing research more about epilepsy. I came across earlier this year, it hasn't, I have to check the year on it. They have something called positive psychology and actually a professor 
and not too far from where I live at the Claremont Institute, was one of the co-founders of this form of psychology. And what I really loved about it is they talked about the history of um, psychology and mental health. And they said, we labeled it as something so bad. Every time you read into it, it's, you have this problem, you have this problem. There's all these problems. And it's like, why can't we have a branch of mental health where we say, you know what? We deserve to be happy. Yes. We deserve to be healthy. Yes. What can we do to dig into and find these tools to create happiness for one another? Right. And it was so nice to see um, a professional a researcher go, I know about all these things that can cause darkness, but what can we do to alleviate the darkness? Exactly. And I think I think it's so important for people to be able to find what makes them happy and yes. don't feel any shame if you're having a bad day, find something. I think one of the best things I did recently was um, here in the area, one of the community centers, they have support group nights on all sorts of different topics. It's only for an hour, but going on Zoom and talking for an hour to other people, it's really alleviated a lot of my yes. anxiety. And also it's nice to see others because I mean, I work from home. I have right. two kids. So I'm in that routine where it's, it's kids and work, kids and yeah. work and other responsibilities. Mm -hmm. And after a while, even though you're not alone, you know, I have a wonderful husband and my kids and I know I'm loved. There's times you go, gosh, I feel so alone. I'd like to be around other adults sometimes. Yeah. <laughs> and it really helps to be able to have a few people just to talk to, even if it's just once a week going on there. So I encourage people, if you can find support groups, if you have a community center in your area, yeah. or if you go online, if there's any type, I know um, different branches of the Epilepsy Foundation mm -hmm. have support groups. They will have teen nights or adult yes. nights. I mean, don't be afraid to go on and say hi. And yeah. if you find that group, okay, it doesn't work for me. I mean, now with the power of uh, social media and everything, you don't have to say, well, my area location, I didn't feel comfortable. Oh, I can't see anybody. Follow these branches on social yeah. media. Find a group that you're happy with. And if you find a group you're happy with, make an effort to go and do it for you. Don't worry about what anyone else thinks. Do it for you. Because I found one of the most painful things when it came to epilepsy and depression is the isolation. Yeah. Like you said, when you couldn't drive, you feel like a prisoner in your house. And yeah. my family didn't get that. I was in um, an auto accident years ago. A doctor of mine put me on a medication and it triggered me to have a seizure without warning. And I crashed my car. Wow. I couldn't drive for a year and a half. It, it was really bad, but I can't tell you, I went out, um, at times just to sit in my car and every once in a while I'd start the car so the uh gas that was in the tank wouldn't get all watery yeah. in my car and one day my mother came running out she thought I was gonna hop in the car and take off and I'm like I'm not driving anywhere I know better than to do that and she's like well why are you in the car and I said ma I gotta you know I gotta just sit here let me listen to a couple songs and remind myself I can get past this that right. one day I will be able to get in my car and back yes. it out of the driveway and be able to drive myself again. And it's just little things like that, finding little things to say, okay, it's bad right now. I don't feel great, but I'm going to set this goal. And I know if I follow this goal and follow the what I need to do, the steps, I can overcome this and yes. I can do what I need to do for myself. And at and that I moment, you you focused on the positive. You said, I'm exactly. going to get over it. You know, I'm going to pass this, you know, and that made a big difference. Oh, yeah. And I and I found I think really why I was stuck in such a negative rut for a while was I can't tell you how many times in my early 20s and, you know, I didn't get support for going to college for my doctors and therapists. It's you need to go on disability. I know I can get paid. No, you need to go on disability. And when people hear that from the people who are supposed to support them over and over, after a while, that clicks. You go, well, yeah, I guess I can't do it. I guess I got to get a lawyer. Yeah, I'm not going to be able to drive. Well, why am I bother trying? I'm just going to do what you I need to, to do. You start to believe it. When people yes. keep telling you things over and over again, even though they're wrong, you know, if it's if it's like a recording in your ear over and over and over and over again, 
a lot of people are going to start to believe what they hear. They're like, well, they must be right. There's more than one person telling me this, you know, but that's not true. You have to go with what's inside you. What does your inner instinct tell you? If you think you could do it, don't listen to the people around you. Exactly. You could do it. You could do it, you know? And even just writing down one of the things a former mentor of mine told me that was I found wonderful. He told me, get a whiteboard or even type something up on paper and make three personal goals and three professional goals and just stick it somewhere where every day, if it's when you first wake up in the morning or you go into your office, yep. you look, it's there and you remind yourself of what you're capable of doing, what you can work for. And he said, and there's no shame in at some point changing it. Maybe yeah. you couldn't get to the, get to that goal in the time you wanted, take a step back, reassess the situation change it and then start yes. working towards it again yeah, and I, I mean it could be something as simple as I'm going to reduce my depression by going for a walk 20 minutes every day exactly. it doesn't have to be anything major it could no. be something just as simple as that it's just as simple as that and I and I talk about that when I talk about to people I, I teach them about short-term goals and making long-term goals and just simple goals just like you said taking a walk for 20 minutes. It doesn't have to, you're not, you're not thinking about these gargantuan goals. You know, you're being realistic with yourself, just little goals. And, and when you do it, you, you feel good about it, you know, you, and you, oh, that, yeah. that helps your self-esteem and your, your self-confidence, believe it or not. And the more that you, 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 you apply these little goals and the more you do it, the better you feel as a person. And before you know it, your self-confidence builds up and you as a person starts to feel better and that you'll see that the depression starts to decrease. Now, there was um, some questions that people had asked. One of the questions they asked us was, how does epilepsy affect depression? And people with epilepsy are more likely to develop depression and other mood disorders even before their first seizure. This suggests that the changes in the brain that make a person susceptible to seizures also make them more susceptible to depression than the general population. So what do you think about that? Well, it, it's very true because of um, if you have something like head trauma or any malformation or anything in the brain, it causes the brain to act differently. Yes, it changes it the biochemical levels of your um, neurotransmitters. And one thing I was talking to somebody recently about who um, his child has autism, but she's also had a history of having seizures, even though she wasn't officially diagnosed with epilepsy. Right. He was really frustrated with her behavior. And I said, well, think about it. Your daughter's taking anticonvulsants, which slows her central nervous system down. Mm -hmm. It increases depression, it increases being tired, but then she's also on SSRIs, which are selective serotonin reuptake inhibitors. Yes. And that's trying to make the brain activity increase. It's trying to push serotonin through to lower depression. Amazing. And I'm on, on a similar situation. Yeah. I'm on three anticonvulsants, two are for my seizures, one is for pain management, yeah. but then I'm on a low dose of Sola for the same reason. Right. And I said to my friend, I said, the only way I could describe this is my brain, her brain, it's it's like a biochemical hot mess. You got part of your brain going slow down, take it easy. Yeah. You got another part of your brain going, come on, let's go. We got to make this happen. We got to get better. And I think people just don't realize that's one of the main reasons these medications, they just suck the energy out of people. Yeah. And that's what causes a lot of these um, mood conditions, the anxiety and depression. And I found that I had to acknowledge, all right, I'm not getting off medicine. This is going to be a life journey. Yes. But I have to make sure I'm doing what I can to reduce or alleviate some of these side effects yeah. so that you know I have a good quality of life. That's why I go out in my garage every day once I take the kids to school I work out I come in and have a good breakfast I go through my list of things I have to do and where I used to stress myself out and be like I have to get this all done I go through and I'll pick two or three that I know are the most important yep. and that's my focus for the day if I can do more great if I can't I can't and you just have to be able to um find where your boundaries are yes. and find your strengths and you know even weaknesses. There's no, I mean, I used to be the kind of person where I was so type A, failure wasn't an option, weakness wasn't an option. I burned myself out emotionally, mentally being like that. I did too. I, 
I had to say to myself, okay, I'm not, a, if I can't do something, that doesn't make me a failure. I just have to go back to the situation and say, okay, right now, for some reason, I can't get this goal done. Do I need more time? Do I actually need help with it? Yeah. What kind of tools can I find? Can I research something, make it easier? So, you know, I told myself, it didn't took a long time to get out of my mind. Failure is yeah. not an option. It's okay. It's not failure. Right. I'm learning and at this point. I'm missing something and what can I do to learn it so yes. I can complete it? It's, it's such a, you have to take such a different, look at it through a different set of eyes. That's what yes. I really find so that you can give yourself strength. And I feel like, you know, there's many times where I caused my own seizures because I was a type A also. I started a project. I had to get it done. I had to get it done. Sometimes I would spend eight to 12 hours on the computer and I would drain myself so much that I would cause stress on my body and that would cause me to have a seizure. And then one day my doctor looked at me and he said, you don't have to give it up. He said, but think about your priorities. Think about what's important yeah. in life. You know, do you want to be here for your grandkids? Do you want to have, you know, do you want to see your, your children get married one day? He says, do you, do you want to have a, a fun, fulfilling life? Then you need to put limitations. And then for people with suffering with depression, I think you have to change your lifestyle a little bit. You know, you have to get to the root cause. Why am I depressed? Am I depressed because I'm having a lot of seizures? Okay. So maybe if I change my lifestyle a little, maybe I will cause myself less seizures. And when I changed my lifestyle and I gave myself limits, okay, I'm going to be on the computer till this time. I'm not going to do this much. If I don't get it done today, I'm not going to stay up and try to get it done. I got tomorrow and I, whatever exactly. I don't get done, I'll do the following day. So I put less stress on myself and my body and my seizures started to decrease. I started to eat right. I started to change a lot of the foods I was eating. Believe it or not, a lot of the processed foods and a lot of the foods with high sodium can actually put so many toxins in your body that makes your body so sluggish and stressed that it could actually possibly cause a seizure. Now, I'm not oh, saying absolutely. it's going to do it, but it definitely can. And it's done it for me. And, you know, and even, you know, ca caffeine is good, but it's not too good for your body. You know, if you drink too much, you could stimulate your brain so much that you could cause a seizure. So I'm not saying wipe out coffee because I love coffee. You have to have your limitations and exercise. Exercise is so important. I, you know, and I tell people that might not be in the greatest shape. You only need 15 minutes of exercise and you could just do stretches but that exercise gets out the stress. It moves your bloodstream. It moves the circulation in your body, which helps your body function better, which can play a big role in your decreasing of seizures and also your clarity and your focus on how oh, you yeah. do things. And, you know, I, when I finally became controlled after so many years, I started to feel my, my brain start to heal. And I started to, I was suffering a lot from memory loss. I had a, a terrible short-term memory. And when I start, when I became control, finally, I start, my memory started to improve. I noticed a big difference because my husband would get upset with me. He would tell me something. And then 10 minutes later, you know, whatever he told me, he asked me to do. It's like, it never happened. And like, it never happened, you know, and you know, it, by doing all these things, I kind of helped myself and I, it, it helped me, you know, I'm not going to say like, there are times when, you know, I, I would get depressed and I would think about things, but then I have to, I have to change the, my, my retrain my brain to think differently and to really examine how I'm, what, what's causing my depression, you know, is it related to my epilepsy and what can I do about it? And then, you know, one question we also got was I had, do you, how do you deal with depression and epilepsy? And um, one of the things that was mentioned was speak to your epilepsy treatment team to ask them about where you can find support. Now we talked about this. Support groups are available in person or online. And in addition, many people with mental health disorders like depression or anxiety find that more active lifestyle and eating healthy can help. So that's an actual fact that was given by one of the organizations. And that's something we just talked about. And it actually, it worked for us. And it's actually stated on the on the internet, you know, that, um, that it does work. So that's something people could actually think about is what are they eating? What's their lifestyle? Are they exercising? You know, and because you could be in your, you could fall into that pity party and say, poor me, poor me, poor me, but you're not going to get better unless you reach out, get help 
And I think, you know, I think it's great because I went on a Zoom call with a lot of people that had a similar problem that I did. And it was so refreshing to know that you're not alone. And even people said thank you to me at the end because they're like, you know what? I realize I'm not alone that, you know, there are more people just like me that are thinking exactly and feeling exactly the way I do. And it's refreshing and you learn from each other. And that's so that really is the truth because I think that was one of the biggest challenges I had as a young child and teenager was I didn't really know anyone with epilepsy. I had one friend who had seizures and she outgrew them. She had absence seizures when she was younger, but you know, I was the only one I knew of who went to status, who had to be on heavy medication, who had to go through all these things. And it was such a lonely feeling because I thought who really understands what I go through every day. Yeah. And I felt like I had no um level of compassion from any of the neurologists I was with. Like they, they you know, they couldn't get it. And I've even had yeah. times when I've been in the hospital and they have the fellows come around, and talk to you. I got frustrated one day with one of them. And she's just like, well, I, I don't know what you mean. I said, well, I understand you don't know what you mean. I mean, because you can't feel it. Yeah. I said, I understand, you know, the research, your book's part and everything. I go, but you can't feel what I'm feeling. That's why it's important for, you know, I would get so frustrated with time with doctors and be like, you, we got to communicate. I yes. understand you're on a time schedule, but you know, how are you going to help me if I can't tell you how I feel? Yeah. And that's why I found, um, once I started meeting people who had epilepsy as well and getting involved in support groups and everything, you know, it was a mixed feeling. There were some people it was so refreshing to talk to them. And then, like you said, there are some people who were so depressed or so angry. You know, I had empathy for them because you could tell they just couldn't get out of their own way. Yeah. But at the same time, I just couldn't be around them, not because I didn't care about them or want to help them. I realized until they were ready to help themselves, yes. there was nothing I could do for them. I had the same problem, you know, because when you're around people who are very negative, who, you know, think that, it, that nothing's ever going to get better and all they can think about and talk about is negative, 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 it can be draining, you know, and you, it's, it's very hard to even give advice to that person because they don't want to hear it because they think the worst of the worst all the time. So no matter what you say to them, it's not going to make a difference and they end up sucking the energy out of you. They end up making, they end up putting, pulling you into their hole of depression. And when you start feeling that drain feeling after you talk to somebody like that, you know that it's time to take a step back. Not because you don't like the person, because the person is actually pulling you down. And with epilepsy, the last thing you need is someone pulling you down because you need to be pumped up. You know, the yes. only way to get better is to to feel the empowerment inside you and to feel good about yourself and to love yourself and accept yourself and, and to have high self-esteem. And you can get all those things. And, you know, and we show you how both Natalie and I and, you know, getting and staying away from negative people will help you. That's the big one. Staying away from negative people. Stay around positive people that will give you positive reinforcement and be around people that can understand you. Your family might understand, love they love you, but they might understand what you're going through. Your doctor might not understand what you're going through. Reach out and find people who understand what you're going through. That way, when you talk to them, you're like, you, they get the gist of it. They understand and they can give you their, their advice. And it might not be the advice you always want to hear, but it's sometimes, sometimes the things we don't want to hear is actually good for us too, you know, and, and sometimes, you know, the best advice is, is listening to other people. And I always say that you could, you learn a lot from, from other people, especially when people are going, walking through the same pathway. And especially if they are a few steps ahead of you, you can, you, you know, it's good to converse and get different, different perspectives because you learn from each other. Oh, absolutely. And, and when it comes to being around the right people, I think one of the hard things I had, because there were a lot of people in my family who were very toxic about me having epilepsy. And for a long time, I just kept thinking, well, they're family. I have to be around them. I have to support them. I can't do this or that. I finally had to tell myself, it's okay to have a long distance relationship. Yes. It's okay to, you know, just send a text and say, thinking of you, I hope you're well, or yes. rather than seeing them weekly, maybe once a month or every other month, 
you know, my family's, you know, home in New York and I'm here in California, but going on Zoom and talking to them, even if it's for 30 minutes, you know, you can make that effort, but knowing that um, there's that tension there, say, you know, I love you, but I have to love you for from a distance as I deal with these things. I mean, yes. there's no nothing wrong. So many people think I can't cut certain people out of my life. I can't do certain things. If that's what's going to help you to become healthier and stronger, there's nothing wrong with saying I love you, but I have to let go. I yes. just can't continue on this pattern. I can't continue down this path. And that even includes in healthcare. If you have a doctor who you feel yes. just cannot get past you having, oh, you can't do this. Or the one I had a former doctor and annoyed me when he didn't, he didn't like if I questioned anything. And the moment I did, it was, oh, this is all in your head. Yeah. And one day I really wanted to look at him and go, really? It's in my head. All these years, I thought it was in my foot. Well, at least we know where it is. We're making progress, aren't we? I just wanted to be so sarcastic right yes. back at him. I wanted to let him have it. But I realized, you know, he wasn't a bad person. But I think what it was is a lot of his patients were there with conditions like Parkinson's. Yeah. And I, and I think he just didn't want to say to me, you know, I don't take care of a lot of adults with epilepsy you know, maybe we should find an epileptologist just to help. Yeah. You know, I think he didn't want to say to me, he didn't know something. And that's his own ego. Exactly. You know? It's not, it's not, that's not something that you did. That was his own ego, but you know what there are, I've been to doctors where they were Googling while I was talking to them. And, oh my goodness. and then I was like, uh, you know, I would kind of looked over and I could see the, the, the neurologist typing away and I'm like, she shouldn't be typing. Like she, you said, she was more a specialist in one area and they are very good. They do have a lot of good neurologists that can deal with epilepsy, but I always, where I am, there's a lot of clinics for epilepsy and there are a lot of epileptologists. So I like to go to an epileptologist and I found a, a fabulous epileptologist that just does epilepsy, 24 seven epilepsy. So I feel very comfortable and, you know, and my doctor is very positive. My doctor always reinforced me, always was positive, never tried to pull me down. And I used to even come in with questions and, you know, you know, things that I heard. I'm like, is this true? No, that's a myth. Is this true? You know, yes, that is true. And then he would go into detail about it. But he oh, was nice. always, you know, it, it, he always took anything I said seriously. And it, it could be the silliest thing. He didn't care. He listened. He understood. And he gave me an answer, you know, and it, there was no judgment on neither part. And it's very important for someone to have good communication because you have to be able, if you're suffering from depression, you have to be able to tell your epileptologist or neurologist, hey, I'm feeling depressed. And you, because you don't know if it's from the medication, a symptom from the medication, or if you're actually depressed, because if it's from the medication, they might have to wean you off that medication and put you on a oh, different yeah. medication. So you communication is key. And I think that's one thing we have to remember. And one thing I want to talk about before we go is that someone had mentioned is epilepsy, a mental illness and epilepsy is not a mental illness. In fact, the vast majority of people living with epilepsy have no cognitive or psychological problem. For the most part, psychological issues in epilepsy are limited to people with severe and uncontrolled epilepsy. And people have to realize that it's a neurological disorder and that it's not a, it's not a disease, it's a disorder. Mm -hmm. And it has nothing to do with being, having any type of mental disease or disorder. It's totally different. How do you no, think about it, that? It, it is. And a lot of it has to do with, I think, um, I think some people don't understand the complexity that epilepsy can bring to someone's life because, you know, when people research conditions, they're almost looking like, okay, this is what it is, diagnosis, sign, symptom, and it's supposed to be simple, like they want it all laid out. Well, yeah. with epilepsy, it could depend what part of the brain is infected. Was this due yes. to a genetic mutation, a head injury, post-stroke complications, or not even being able to even find out what has caused it. And, yes. you know, that's why, you know, I find what makes me truly want to be an advocate for this community, because I think a lot of people due to a uh, fear of the unknown and not understanding it, 
really don't know how to empathize or take the time to see what challenges someone with epilepsy can truly be facing to yes. help them find a solution to those challenges. And I feel yes. as a community, we really need to now work hard to come together. I know there's been a lot of um, stigma in our community. There's a lot of pain in our community, but I feel we can all come together we and can. take that pain and we can turn it into strength by helping one another and just letting each other know we're not alone in this. No. Epilepsy can be a very isolating condition. It can yes. create a lot of loneliness. But at the end of the day, none of us are really alone. Exactly. You know, a lot, like we mentioned earlier, there are a lot of people that can't work because of it. They might not be able to work. But now, you know, with the with so many jobs being, you know, they could do it from home. You know, there are options where, you know, there's more options for people with epilepsy now. And, and some people get, like I did, very depressed that I couldn't drive. And, you know, all these things could lead to depression. A lot of things in with epilepsy could lead to depression. Just having seizures, you know, there was one, you know, um, it, there was one question I remember getting, I don't know, I have it in front of me, but they said, how long does it, does um, the, dep the feeling of depression last after you've had a seizure? Because remember I was saying I would feel depressed after I had a seizure. Yeah. You know, especially if you're like, oh, I'm three weeks seizure free. And then all of a sudden the seizure comes and you feel like you're you're going back to square one again. You know, you're oh, trying yeah. to count those days and that could be very depression, depressive. And, you know, I, they say a lot of times when people get a seizure, it can last from 12 to 24 hours. The feeling of depression that they had the seizure, you know, so p it's normal to feel depression, depression. It's just you have to realize when depression has starting to become a control over your life and you're waking up every day sad and you can't function and you can't see the, 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 the bright sunlight in the morning and all you can see is the darkness. That's when you have to reach out and you have to get help and you have to start talking to people and you have to start looking at changing your lifestyle, changing the way you think and changing the things you do because you don't want to get to the point where um, like Nat Natalie was talking about where she felt like she wanted to commit suicide. So many, so many people have committed suicide and that's something no family member, you know, wants to see this, their loved one you know, get to that point and we don't want to lose you, you know, exactly. So, you know, it, it's always good to talk to somebody. And even if you have a psychologist or a therapist to talk to, and you can share these emotions and they're in confidentiality, you know, you, it is always good to talk to somebody and, you know, learn ways to avoid things like that. And there are nonprofits, you know, you have to do a search, but when I had a real serious trauma, it wasn't related to my epilepsy years ago. I sought help. And for a while, I was actually able to give free counseling. And a lot of organizations, a lot of companies will offer what's called employee assistance programs, which if you're not doing well, short term, they can give you so many free sessions while they help you find a uh, a psychologist that may be on your insurance plan so that you can you know set some goals and see where you need to be and take it from there. I mean if you're in touch and know of free resources or your employer can help you find some resources, don't feel any shame in going to HR and saying, you know, I'm having a rough time right now. I want to be able to stay focused on my job. You know, can I get a few free sessions through the program? Can I get the EAP number? Mm -hmm. And, you know, let them know what's, you know, you don't have to go into your personal life what's going right. on, but just let them know, you know, I'm having a little bit of a rough patch right now and I want to stay focused on the job. Is there any way I can call and just have a time to maybe if I just talk to somebody in a session or two, I can get past this. I mean, those are what those resources are for. So take yes. full advantage of them if, if they're available to you. If you know of organizations that can help you, don't be afraid or ashamed to um, pick up the phone and talk. And if things get real bad, like I said at the beginning about the 988 number, that's there for a reason. There's no shame in calling and saying, you know, I'm overwhelmed right now. Can I just vent, please? And, yes. you know, and getting that message across. That's why those volunteers are there so that you're not holding it inside and then doing something to harm yourself. Exactly. And nowadays the healthcare system, if if you have healthcare, the healthcare systems are partying up with a third party, their coach, they're they're partying up with therapists and coaches. 
And if you are suffering from depression or if you are suffering from suicidal thoughts, you could call your healthcare provider and you can tell them that you, you need to speak with somebody. And a lot of times they will give you X amount of sessions for free and the you don't have to pay for it. Your healthcare will pay the cost for it and you receive the coaching sessions and the therapy sessions to help you with your depression. And if you go to our YouTube channel for the Defeating Epilepsy Foundation, we have a section for mental health wellness awareness and we have videos on PTSD, anxiety and depression, other sources. And please go ahead and watch them or you can go to our blog and our website at www.defeatingepilepsy.org and please read them. The, you know, I found the first step I took in healing and really being able to acknowledge that this was going to be a life journey. I sat down and made the effort to educate myself about epilepsy, educate myself about the symptoms I had, because I finally just had enough of saying, you know what? I don't really understand what I'm going through. I mm -hmm. can't really get the answers I need from a doctor. Well, I realized the only way I was going to advocate for myself was through education. Yeah. So please go ahead and, you know, those resources are available on our site and YouTube channel for that exact reason. And you're always welcome to email me at info at defeatingepilepsy.org. If you have any questions, I'm more than happy to, you know, talk on the phone or talk through email, whatever you're more comfortable with. And the, the blessing I've had in the uh, couple of years since we launched is I've had a lot of people reach out to me and just sometimes they just needed to vent. They needed to talk to somebody who mm -hmm. they knew had it as well. And they could just say, you know what? I'm not talking to a doctor who knows it through a book, or I'm not talking through a therapist who's trying to explain it. I'm talking to someone who lives with it every day, like me. And, yeah. you know, that's my, that's my job. That's what I'm here for as an advocate. So please don't hesitate to reach out if it's something just as simple as that. And I have a website called the epilepsycarecoach.com and I give out free consultations and you can also reach me on my YouTube channel. I have natural healing tips and you can even type in my name if you, if you have a hard time finding it and my videos will pop up. And even with this video, if you leave questions for both me and Natalie in the comment box, we will do our best to answer any questions. If you have questions about, you know, um, how to cope with depression, um, organizations that you want to learn more about anything that, that comes to mind, don't be embarrassed. You know, we're here to help you. Any questions that you might have of how we could help people with, um, depression and any resources or ideas that we have, we'll be, we'll be happy to provide you with any answers to any comments or questions in the comment box. Absolutely. So, you know, we, once again, I'd like to thank everybody for listening to this video and this podcast and, you know, thank you so much for taking the time out. I hope that we helped you and I hope that we, you know, can help you more in the future. And if you have any questions about epilepsy and you'd like us to do a video about it, you know, shoot us a text, shoot us an email, shoot us um, a comment in the comment box, and we will be happy to create a video with your questions and answer your questions the best we can. Is there anything else that you'd like to input before we go? No, I think we gave a lot of great information today, but I also want to say the same thing. Don't, you know, please leave us a comment in the section below. Reach out to us. Both Stacy and I are here to support everyone. And we just want to do what we can to um, make a difference for all of you and bring a positive vibe to our community. And thank you once again for listening and we'll see you soon. We do a video um, every week and a podcast every week. So we look forward to seeing you guys and we hope that you guys will follow us and subscribe to our channels and, you know, learn a lot from what the different topics that we're about to cover in the near future. So have a great day, everybody. Have a good one.